All right, let's look at one of the big boy games tonight. We're going to talk about a Big 12 matchup between the Oklahomas, Oklahoma Sooners against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. This game at 9.30 Eastern on ESPNU, the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, Missouri. Oklahoma State opened as a one-point favorite. And, uh, Adam, I'll start with you. They're currently one across the board, a couple of one-and-a-halves out there. Total opened 135-and-a-half. It's dropped down to about 135. So, Adam, not too much movement on the side or total. Which way are you going in this one? I'll go quicker here, and I'll, I'll leave most of this one to, to the other two guys because th- this is I have I don't have a huge opinion in this game, um, other than the fact that I'll just point out that Oklahoma State would have to beat the same team three times uh, in a season, which is is maybe an overrated angle at times, but it's still something to to note, uh, especially when it's your rival. Um, it, that that's never easy to do. Problem here is I don't love the matchup for Oklahoma. Um, o- Oklahoma State they're athletic. They can can force Oklahoma into turnovers, something that they will do. But the problem here is, like, if Oklahoma State doesn't have Avery Anderson, that's a concern. Um, that would be that would be something that would ultimately give me, you know, kind of pause and want no part of Oklahoma State. So I think it's going to be a pretty good game. I think that number is about right. Uh, kind of a coin flip to me here. Uh, I'll be monitoring Anderson's status. But ultimately, I don't know if there's going to be enough to get me to jump in with either side here. So I'll leave this one to the other two guys and see if they have anything stronger than me. Yeah, and Brian, I'm going to come back to you next because, first of all, I think you have a good Oklahoma State joke. It's over Nary, who's not here, so i got to hear that. But I also want to get your thoughts on this. As Adam said he's kind of neutral on this game, and the betting market's been pretty neutral as well. Very little movement so far in the side or total. Yeah, I was. <laughs> it had Joe been hosting, I, I was going to just say, well, I guess we should go with Oklahoma State because I know where my bread is buttered on this show, but that's not exactly <laughs> actionable info there, Steve. So let's instead focus on the fact that the Cowboys, the, as Trigg said, they beat the Sooners twice during the regular season. They win by 16 in Stillwater and 10 in Norman. And going back further, they're 5-1 and one straight up and against the number of the last six meetings here in this rivalry. Uh, now, the Cowboys are a bit of a streaky team. Uh, They had a five-game win streak in early February. Then they lose five in a row. Uh, But they closed the regular season with an outright win at Texas Tech. Winning on the the road in this league is not easy, Steve. You know that. And uh, sticking with the Jekyll and Hyde theme here, you know, Oklahoma, man, they have perhaps the most outlier performance of any team this college basketball season when they beat Alabama 93-69. to I was on the Sooners in that game. That was... It was something I remember I was actually at the bar and it was odd. And I just kept looking over doing a double take at the score. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. But since that game, since just thumping Alabama, Oklahoma, Steve, just three and seven straight up with six double digit losses. So it's not been a good end of the regular season for them. Uh, Trigg mentioned the matchup. Yeah, I think Oklahoma State matches up well with Oklahoma. Top 20 in defensive efficiency. The Sooners do turn the ball over too much. Highest turnover percentage in the Big 12, in fact. Uh, and Oklahoma State, if they're hitting their threes like they did in the first meeting, they should be in really good shape. When they won in Norman, and, and this is interesting to look back at, Oklahoma State only hit four of 16 from three, and they had a minus 21 de- deficit in free throw attempts, and they still won by 10. I don't think we're going to see that kind of three-point shooting and that kind of deficit uh, from the charity stripe tonight. So that's another reason like Oklahoma State. Avery Anderson does give you pause his status. Uh, they have the very generic resumed basketball activities uh, has been reported for him. And if he plays, this number will shoot up. So if you like Oklahoma State and you don't care about Anderson's status, I would bet them right now. Uh, they are 14-3 and three straight up, 11-6 and six against the number when favored. With or without Anderson, my lean is to Oklahoma State. So that, that's how I'll play this one. Drew Martin, you know, I posted last week, I posted a college basketball contest. It's still up there. It goes all the way through Selection Sunday. And I've got a lot of different questions like who will make the tournament, who will be a higher seed. And when I did this last week, I was looking at Lenardi's projections. North Carolina was the first out. So I put that as my first question. Will North Carolina make the tournament or not as a 50-50? They've fallen a little bit further even. Um, But I bring that up because right now, if you look at the projections, Oklahoma State is the first team out of the tournament. They were the second out last week when I was looking at it. Um, so it's a huge game, obviously, tonight. I would say they have to win this game. Do you think that's maybe why they're a one-point favorite? And, Drew, what are you doing with this one? You know, putting the number on that, like, kind of almost motivation, I always find, like, 
it, it depends, you know, there's bias involved in that, Steve. So I always think it's kind of like a, a, a tough question to answer. Um, I, I actually think Oklahoma State is favored in this game just because Oklahoma, I mean, sitting under 500, what, 15 and 16 on the season. Outside of that Alabama game, which uh, Brian talked about, I mean, it has been a horrific run for the Sooners. They're three and seven, their last 10. Now, Oklahoma State hasn't been playing good basketball either. Uh, they've w- lost, what, five of their last six. They did beat the Red Raiders their last time out. And the, the guys already talked about it, Avery Anderson. I think that's a big part of this handicap, Steve. And keep in mind, guys, I mean, if they lose this game, you know, first round of the Big 12 tournament, um, and they're sitting here on the bubble, they're likely not going to make the tournament. So I actually think he gives it a go. Um, it, it, you know, Brian talked about, you know, the reports out of Stillwater are, you know, he's resuming activities. It, when you're the best player, you're the point guard. I think you do give it a go. Now it's a wrist injury. How effective will he be? They're a lot better team when he's playing and when he's 100%. So I think this is a great opportunity to watch this game. Bedlam, first round Big 12 tournament. And if he's out there and he's playing well, maybe look to bet on the suit, excuse me, on uh, Oklahoma State here and lay in the one if you get anywhere near that kind of around game time and he's out there. Um, I think that's a pretty good bet. So that's the way I'm going to go after this one. Look to bet Oklahoma State if Avery Anderson does play. Yeah, and something you know, I talked about how there's been very little movement in the betting market on the side or total. I think a lot of people might be saying, let's wait for the in-game betting, Drew. You know, let's catch a live line. Let's see how he looks out there or if he's out there. So I think that's an excellent point and a great way to attack this game maybe tonight at 930 Eastern if you're watching it on ESPNU.